I'm not home. <laughs> and that guy talking was just Donald. <laughs> we're the uh, senior management team, I guess, of this last little teapot. And we're kind of here to talk about a new, uh, a new little magazine that we've got going. And it keeps slipping back, back to Donald, standing there. There he goes. <laughs> So, record? It's recording now, so so it's actually recording us saying that it's a recording. Uh, first of all, I'd like to apologize to anybody and everybody who might be watching this video. We have no idea what we're doing with Google Hangouts. Uh, this is a first try, so please bear with our idiocy and uh, inability to work with anything that functions. I, I, I heard that uh, the internets are on computers these days, and... We've attempted to access things, like the <laughs> Google. Yeah, I thought the internet was like this room that they had in science camp and when I was in sixth grade, and uh, it was yeah. a room out of nets. And you were in you you were in the net. Yeah, <laughs> that was well, the internet. What was it? Ross Perot invented it? No, wait, it was the uh, the former vice president of America. Yeah, what's his name again? Um, he did that movie where he talked about polluting things. He also has a Nobel Prize. That's the guy. So yeah, he created the internet. <laughs> he did. Yeah, Al Gore. Al Gore created the internet. That's correct. So here we are using the internet in its full um, abilities, its, its grand abilities, and um, that's exactly where our magazine resides right now. So we're in our fourth issue, which is pretty exciting, and this issue has a lot of really neat uh, topics and. Our senior editor here, Irene, she, why don't you talk a little bit about what you're going on for us? Uh, we've created a new lens to a brave new world. Um, so we've created articles on... <laughs> Keep going <laughs> back. Not way to There's no rehearsal. This is live. This is broadcast. So we got to keep going. <laughs> Don't rehearse. Just be you. Uh, we've got upper and conditioning... Um, psychological manipulation, lab grown burgers, operant conditioning. You said that already. Get it? Yeah. <laughs> Future of reproduction. Future of reproduction, which is very important because um, as our population become wealthier and more educated, uh, we start having children later in life, and we also start running into fertility issues, which you normally wouldn't have seen if you're having kids in your teenage to early 20s. So, um, um, it, might, it, might, it might lead directly to the society created in space uh, via, well, in regards to the movie Elysium. I don't know if you guys have seen that yet. But no, no, I haven't seen Elysium. But I was thinking of like children. Oh, no, you saw, she saw Elysium. <clears throat> but I was thinking of, like, um, you know, children of men as an example of when fertility becomes a, a, a huge issue, you know, what do you do? Like, I mean, look at countries like Japan and Canada, where our aging population is getting to the point where there's more older people than there are actual people who do work, you know, and um, who's going to take care of all those people? Where's the money going to come from, the resources and stuff? And so we have to have more children. In a lot of our countries, we um, import their immigration, but that doesn't replenish the actual country's population, it just shifts population. Maybe that's the solution, but... Um, well, uh, the lowering of the population is not, that's not a bad thing at all. Uh, in fact, we need to have a lower population. Uh, us sitting at about 7 billion people right now is just way too much. We, it's been the cause of a lot of famine and just a lot of disease as it is. If we could bring the population down to about four billion, which would be pretty acceptable if everybody was educated and had the money to live properly, it would be ideal. Well, what's interesting is when you start giving reproductive controls over to women in developing uh, societies, populations start to slow down, and education rises, and poverty lowers, right? Because they have less kids to have to deal with, and um, you know, in our societies, you know, we have four or five kids and we can afford to take care of them, but in poor countries, you know, they're encouraged through, whether it's religion or culture, to have multiple children, and it keeps slipping back to the computer, have multiple children, um, that, that, that perpetuates poverty. You know, that's at least one of the things that perpetuates poverty. There and was, um, I saw something about a correlation between um, abortion laws being instituted and crime rates slowly going down. Because people had 
some of the people during the prison year, but they had kids when they were able to financially able to support them and there was less poverty and less crime. Which is that might explain um, like that that's a lot of what had to do with the baby boom in the fifties here in the United States. Uh, is it was pretty much we needed more uh, blue collar workers, and then once all those blue collar workers grew up, we didn't need all the blue collar workers. We were we ended up going through a pretty crappy recession in the seventies, which may have been caused by the baby boom. <laughs> yeah, they're the deserving ones since they have told all our kids these days they show up iPods and make million dollars right out of graduation. From college, but but even though our you know when our population starts getting older and starts having children later, there will be reproductive issues that that could translate into bigger problems. And it's hard to tell somebody you can't have a kid. It's pretty draconian how the uh, the Chinese did it with their one-child policy. And yeah, forcing that is tough. You know, it's it, it has to be a socially acceptable thing to not want to have multiple children. And, and, and until that happens, uh, we can't really control that. So what we have to do is we have to find technologies that can make it um, uh, make it easier to educate and to help people maybe have children later in life so we can have a replenishing population but have a lower population. So if everybody has one or two children in their 30s, eventually population rates will start declining, and they are declining in a lot of the world. So, yeah. especially as, as education and women's rights and uh, control over their own reproductive, um, their, their own re reproduction of the kids. When they control, well, it's like trailed off there. Babies. When they make it the babies. <laughs> and so that's important because without that control, uh, without, without helping women take that control, then um, you'll perpetuate poverty and, and you know, old world patriarchal societies. So um, that's one way of doing it. So stop having babies when you're a baby. That's what I say. Well, I mean, it's smart. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, I think that 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 might just be a symptom of uh, of another problem. Well, we, well yeah, I mean, it's like one of well, one of my things is uh, like my answer to everything. Like pretty much every problem on earth is educate everyone, and uh, <laughs> I think that. Uh, considering it's proven that the more educated somebody is, the more likely they are to wait later in life to have a kid. Babies aren't going to have babies if we properly educate our society as a whole. That's right. So that's right. So that's so usually, uh, like in debates and things, I, I usually end up uh, on the whole. Oh no, education is, is should be our first priority. Uh, and then. Uh, yeah, then from there we can we can start solving other problems because we'll have a smart enough society to be able to actually figure things out. Yeah, exactly. And you know, education also improves distribution of wealth, improves distribution of resources, and um, it just encourages more. I hate the word. I know not a lot of people have the word liberal, but it's more liberal acceptance of things and, and to work together more instead of always putting black and white objections to uh, people that have things that are different. So yeah. education is, is most important. I think that our viewers and anyone interested in this will probably agree. Um, there's not much well, that's, that's, that's more important than education. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah. how do we do it, right? And so uh, part of the Celestial Teapot's mandate is to educate people. But we already have kind of like, you know, you guys are all converted, right? You know, we're preaching to the converted. But what we need to do is start engaging people and communicating these ideas. It's not that we're atheists and we're like, you know, we're this whole different group of people. You know, one-fifth of the world's population is probably going to end up becoming atheists in the next 25 years. But um, that we want to work together regardless of religion and culture and actually share ideas, you know, and, and not be so confrontational and not be so aggressive about them. And they kind of, I had a blog talk with us put on the, our site, but for some reason uh, the, the blog thing brought it down. I don't know what happened. Remember the draft thing? But I kind of, I wanted to know, like, why are there so many grumpy atheists? And I think part of the communication issue is that um, a lot of people don't want to deal with 
angry white guys with beards. And that's why Donald shaved his head and beard this I, yeah. about five minutes ago. Literally, I, I yeah, I think that the audience should should know uh, the process behind things. I don't I don't really believe in keeping it hidden. Uh, yeah, this morning I uh, had a full head of hair and a full beard, and uh, I literally shaved while we were on video. I actually used my computer screen as a mirror for shaving. Uh, yeah, it's pretty funny. And uh, and during the shaving, I believe that I mentioned that uh, I need to shave because I don't need to perpetuate the stereotypes that all atheists are white men with beards. So there you go. Well, yeah, that's true. But when I'm completely shaven, I can do a pretty good, uh, like, crazy look, like that the whole, like... <laughs> so that's, that's always fun. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think that part of the outreach is, is, is um, you know, engage people from different countries. So you might find on Facebook or, like, on uh, Google Chat and, or, or Google Hangouts and, and just look for people from other countries that, that might share similar ideals of, about freedom and free thought, yeah. but engage them, even though there might be a big language barrier. You know, I've got friends who are free thinkers from, you know, the Philippines or Japan um, some cases they come over here from they're from Iran or Saudi Arabia, and you know they they're, they're different faces, they have different languages, but they all have the same ideal of like kind of like a, a global humanistic society where we actually work together. Yeah, I know yeah. it's kind of a, a a long shot for for a long time, but it's it's still an ideal to work towards. You know, I do. I I agree completely. Um, like when I joined the team, I know I'm a latecomer to the. Uh, the management staff. I don't. I don't know. The core team. The core team. Uh, I yeah. Uh, and I believe one of the first things I said was we shouldn't be about conversion or argument. We should just be about community and information and dissemination. And uh, I think that as time goes on, people will start to see. You know, we're not here to start fights. We're just we're here to talk, really. Um, yeah, exactly. And it gets past that whole angry ranting stuff that really doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. solve anything. It doesn't engage people. It, it just honestly causes more problems than not. And um, I don't know. I just I just find it – I used to do that when I was younger. You know, I used to really get into big arguments and, and start crap with people. But really, you know, just like winning in an argument on the Internet is – like what does it do? It doesn't do anything. It's stupid, really. You know, you know what I found it's is so the, bad. There's most of the time, what happens, what, what happens during these arguments is, uh, like, even if somebody quote unquote loses, uh, whatever, whatever the argument was about, all it does is further reinforce their beliefs because then they end up just doing research so they can argue their previous thoughts better than they already had the ability to. So yeah. there, all you really do, you know what? Uh, now that I'm thinking about it, like that, that could have, that could be what led to the utter polar, polarization of American politics. Is people had like these minor skirmishes on Facebook or MySpace, you know, what six years ago, nice. and uh, <laughs> and, then, and then they immediately were like, oh no, I lost that political argument. Let me go look it up, and that's what led to like, like complete polarization. Uh, you know, people people like me, I used to be really moderate, but now I'm like out of my mind liberal. Like I I, I literally hug every tree as I'm walking anywhere I go. Literally? Like I, literally. literally that's you literally. <laughs> I love you. Oh man, you, you must be really boring to hike <laughs> with if you're in a forest. How long does it take you to get somewhere? If you like take like hours to get to like half a, half a mile of forest. No, no, we don't even get half a mile. We maybe get an eighth of, the, of a mile and then that's like seven hours. Yeah. For the rest of you uh, in the, the world, America still uses miles and I think like two other countries like, what is it, um, Liberia and um, like uh, the elderly in England I think so use miles. Is, do, we, do we need to clarify the fact that Jeff is, is Canadian or has his, uh, has his accent shown you? Oh, uh, I, I don't know. I, you, your, your accent's kind of Canadian too, so. You know what, when I was in high school, uh, people used to always ask me what my accent was. I don't have an accent, but apparently to everybody else here in California, I do, so. Um, well, it, it's kind of it's kind of Canadian, so you're an honorary Canadian. <laughs> Great, yeah, that's what I wanted today. 
went. Canada's not good enough for you? Uh, no, Canada is too good for me. Um, uh, you guys, uh, you guys have a lot of laws that I really agree with, and then there's the whole um, you're just passive aggressive and sarcastic most of the time, and that's it's good enough for me. Uh, you guys like dark beer? I end up having not so dark beer in my house, and I would rather have a dark beer right now. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, right. No, that was, I, Ethical difficulties. Te, it's like yeah, pattern, <laughs> test pattern. Uh, maybe Donald shouldn't be drinking, right? No, I just it hits it. It's non-alcoholic beer, right? I I threw the uh, I threw the uh, bottle opener and it hit this the shaver. Uh, oh, the shaver. Got, mm-hmm. there you go, there's proof. There's <laughs> proof that I was literally while you're shorning yourself. I mean, yeah. Smooth. Um, let's see. What else? What else happened in in this latest issue? We just talked about medical reproduction or the future of reproduction. Um, yeah, we got some great journalistic work from Chantel. Uh, she actually interviewed um, some of the people who started what what is calling known as atheist churches, but they actually don't even have them called that. It's more of an atheist community place where atheists can gather and help. Yeah. Um, so some great insight into how that works and what makes it different from a regular church. And Perfect. you yourself had a great interview as well. Yes. Well, you know, I had a great person to interview. I I didn't really have to do much. Uh, Dale Dale McGowan just uh, you know, there's a reason he keeps getting published is because he's awesome. He's an amazing guy. So. I, I ended up having a really good time talking with him. I think that that shows through in the conversation itself. So, um, very eloquent. Yeah, yeah, it's very eloquent. Very I, uh, well, it was very well, uh, well written article. I liked it, but I don't like it. <laughs> you don't like me? No, I like you. You're not a thing. You're not a thing. <laughs> You're a person. What? A shaved person. <laughs> There's like feedback, eh? You hear that? I wonder if that's yeah, going to happen with Ryan. Is that us? It's almost like our voice is multiplied over time. Like, like it, it might be. Time and space continue. We have to put your headphones on or something. <laughs> Should I? Should I put my headphones on? Yeah, try putting headphones on. Yeah, try putting your headphones on. Right. Yeah, that's us. Yeah. Yeah. That's us, like, in an earlier time. If I can, uh. Yeah. No. Whoa. Whoa. Technical difficulties for one. Yeah, right? <laughs> We're going to edit it, right? No, it's, it's live. <laughs> All right. This is live. Wow. This is really there's tough. actually, you know what that means? That means that there's actually a possibility somebody is watching this live. No, right it says now. zero viewers right there. That's tough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's fine. We, didn't didn't invite, didn't no, we have to invite people for someone to know it's even happening. So this will save, and then the next time we do Maybe. this, people can watch it. Oh. There's, there's always the chance that we have like a really devout person who's like constantly watching our two videos that exist on this little spot thing. Yeah. And they're just like, I can't wait for them to put up another <laughs> like flipping through a magazine video. So can you turn off your your speakers and? Yeah, I'm, it's only I'm in the head stuff up. Because we can still hear the, hear the feedback. Yeah, I know. Hold on. No one now. No, now we totally can hear ourselves. Yeah, I know. I don't know, I don't know why it's not. Uh, uh, hmm. Well, maybe we should wrap it up. Which is gonna get. Now I can't hear you at all. <laughs> well. So. I know our, we're broadcasting audio because there's a little green line that's going across. The I think that that sounds better now. I don't hear anything. I don't think it's gonna work. Oh no, it's good. What's good? It's fine. Can you hear yeah, us? Yeah, now I've completely lost you. <laughs> oh, but you know what though? We completely. can hear you. Hold on. I can see that you're talking. I can't. Yeah, I can't. We can hear you. We can hear you. We can hear you good. We I can hear you. you. I don't think. Hello. <laughs> can you hear us now? Huh? Yeah, you're not coming out on here either. I don't Can know. we type anything? Uh, do you know sign language? language? This will be broadcast too, right? Do you so, know sign language? Because I can't hear you. Uh, we can hear you. So anyways. 
Let's wrap it up. Let's wrap Let's this up because long. clearly we're having technical difficulties. Wait, we're, into another, we're into another one. We have one viewer so far, which is pretty awesome, but we are wrapping I it up, so I do apologize. I don't know who's viewing this. <laughs> um, there's, a dog, there's a dog right there viewing it. Bye-bye. And um, we, will, we will talk to you later. Signing off. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I can hear you now. Okay. <laughs> I had, to, I had to change the settings on Google Hangouts. So. Uh, okay, well, we're saying bye. All right. Do you see think you we're talking about everything good? I think we got everything. There are also hilarious horoscopes that oh. make everybody laugh. Horoscopes. Horoscopes? Horoscopes. That what about horoscopes? Are we, ma are, are we making up horoscopes right now? Is that what happened while I, while I couldn't hear you? You guys decided we're going to make up horoscopes? Is that no, no. We're saying we're going to wrap it up, and we're just touching on any final points that we wanted to. Yeah, pretty much. All right, cool. Oh. Well, then people, people need to go check out the blog, and they need to start reading uh, the blog section of the website. Although it's called a blog section, it's actually uh, updated regularly with current events um, and not necessarily... Two opinionated of pieces. There's a couple of like video game things in there, and uh, some reflections on world news. So, I think that that's about all I have to say. And that's perfect. And the issue that we discussed, I don't know if we mentioned it, was issue number four. Issue, issue number four. Issue number four. Um, yeah. Available on your site, which is linked below. Hopefully, it'll we'll be, be linked. linked it will be linked. It'll be linked. It'll be linked. <laughs> and we'll link it, and then you'll like it. <laughs> yes. Okay. And, uh, yeah, uh, I believe Jeff apologized earlier, but I will apologize as well to anybody who, uh, who actually sat through this entire thing. Um, it, has, it has been a cluster, you know, and uh, it's been I fun. promise. I think, yeah, definitely. I think we next now time. know what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> we will uh, be better. I don't, think that, I don't think that any of us have been watching the clock either, so we don't yeah, really have an idea of how long this better. video actually is. Um, but hopefully we touched on some interesting topics and we hope you guys can comment below and say what you think on anything we talked about definitely um, and uh, if anybody if any if any of the viewers would like to participate in a uh, possible future Google Hangouts discussion just let us know uh, you can contact us at Jeff at CelestialTeapopMagazine.com or uh, no no just contact us just, just, call, just contact Jeff, Jeff. Um, and then we'll get it, we'll get it set up. Uh, and uh, if anybody feels like debating, um, go to another website because that's not what we're about. <laughs> we're talking. Yeah, yeah, we're here for discussion and fun and just completely destroying uh, our reputation as people who use the internet. Yeah, exactly. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you Bye. for watching. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>